Hi everyone, so today I'm going to have a look at question 4 from the Loops 1 practical where we use loops to draw a pattern. Uh, so let's get started. So what we have is this picture here. We know that we want to draw what looks like 18 lines. It's actually 20 lines. There are two lines here which are just a dot. Um, so what we could do with this question is we could not do it with loops and we could do 20 separate line calls um, but we could definitely make it more efficient. We can write a loop um, that will only require two separate line calls inside it um, and that's a much better way of writing this program here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at these two different patterns. We'll have a look at the red ones and then the blue ones. Um, we'll have a look at each of these lines, see if there's a pattern um, and then try and design a loop that will um, create this pattern for us. And we're going to look at it one at a time. Um, so first off, I've got my diagram here. I've got my red lines um, and we want to write this program so that it's scalable. I've just done my window as 400 by 400 just to make it a bit easier. Um, but we want to write this so that it's scalable. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, and the way that I worked out each of these coordinates here um, is in the question that asked to create lines that are evenly spaced apart, 10 evenly spaced lines. So if we want 10 evenly spaced lines, then we want to have a line, um, in this case, because the width is 400, every 40 pixels, um, which is represented as width divided by 10. So that's something to keep in mind. If we want it every 40 pixels, width divided by 10, 10 times. Um, but to get started with this question, what I'm going to do is um, write out some line function calls um, to do these first, well this is actually the first one, but I'm going to write some for these three lines here. See if I can find a pattern and then we can design our loop. So let's get started with this one here. So if we were to write some code for this one, we look at this first point here. Um, here we've got x is equal to 40 um, and on the y-axis it's at 0. So this would be at point 40, 0. Um, and then the other point, um, on the x-axis it's still 40 and on the y-axis it's gone down so um, it's 40 on the y as well. Okay, um, and then the second line. Oh, but look at this point here, it's at 80 on the x-axis, 0 on the y. And then our other point here, we've got 80 on the x-axis and then 80 on the y as well. And we'll just do one more line. Next one here, we've got 120 on the x, 0 on the y. And then we've got 120 on the X, 120 on the Y. So we can already see a pattern coming up here. Okay, so we're finding the pattern in these three lines. Um, we want to look at what's similar and what's different in each um, so that we can come up with a loop that will help us achieve what we need to achieve. Um, so the first thing that steps out to me, or what stands out to me, um, is that the second coordinate, this y point for the first point, uh, first coordinate, is always zero. So um, that's something that's common to each of them. We can see that they're all zero. The next thing that I can see is that every other coordinate we're given here is the same value and that's the same for each of these cases. Um, and then the next thing that I can see is that every time um, we're going to the new line, it's increasing by 40 each time. Um, so we can already see our pattern. Uh, we want to draw lines starting at the coordinate zero. Um, and then when we add 40 each time, we'll be drawing a new line and we're drawing 10 of those lines. So we'll continue drawing these lines until we get to 360. Um, so we won't be drawing one at 400. So um, now that we can see a bit of a pattern, we can start to draw our write our loop. 
and I'm going to do a for loop for this one. Um, so we're going to create a variable i and that's going to represent the x and y coordinates except for that y coordinate here um, of each line. So the first line starts at 0, um, you can sort of see it up there. Um, and we want to keep on drawing more and more lines until we get to this point here. So I must be less than 400. Uh, we can make it scalable later. Let's just do it for the 400 value. Um, and every single time we want to increase I by 40 so that we're drawing a new line every 40 pixels. We want that to be red. Um, and here we can write our code. So our I, we said, represents each of our coordinates except for the second one. So we can say I, 0, I, I. Um, and if we trace the values of all the variable here for our loop, um, we would see that the first four times that this runs, well, the first time um, I is 0, we draw a line at 0, 0, 0. 0, 0. Um, the second time the loop runs i is equal to 40, so we've looped around again. Um, i is 40, so we're drawing it at 40, 0, 40, 40, which is this one here. Um, increase by 40, we go back around. Um, now we're doing it by 80, 0, 80, 80. So this should work, and we're happy. Great. So that's working well there. Um, so now what we want to do is have a look at the pattern with the blue lines. Um, work out what that pattern is, and then write some more code. Uh, we just need two lines of code, one to change the color to blue. Um, and then we need our line values here. So let's have a look at our next diagram. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the first three lines and then um, see what the pattern is. Um, and I'm not going to include the line at 0, 0, 0, 0, because that's quite straightforward. Okay, so um, if we have a look at this coordinate here, there is where x is 0 and y is 40. And if we have a look at the matching point here, um, now x is over a bit more, so x is 40 and y is 40. So it's a very similar pattern again. Um, if we have a look at our second line here, this point here, we've got x is 0 and y is 80. Um, and then our second coordinate here, it's gone over again on the x-axis, so x is 80 and y is 80 still. And then last of all, um, I'll just write this one quickly because I'm hoping everyone can see that pattern here. So um, if we have a look at what's similar and different, it's very similar to the, uh, to the red lines, um, but this time it's that first x coordinate that is the same each time. Um, and then for each line, every other coordinate is the same, and those coordinate values are going up by 40 each time again. And it's great that we can see that pattern there, which means we don't have to write a second loop. Both of these lines can be done inside the same loop. So um, we know that the first x coordinate is always 0. Um, and then we can use this i variable again um, to represent our values here because they're the exact same as the ones that we had above. 40, 80, 120, 40, 80, 120, which is really handy in this case. Perfect, and that works there. Um, so now if we want to focus on making this scalable, we want to have a look at our loop values up here. So instead of saying 400 um, as where we're going to stop, um, or 400 is our width or our height, so um, we can have the condition here that um, it must be a screen of equal height and width for this to work. Um, so width and, or height, doesn't matter which one you do. Um, and instead of writing plus equals 40, we said initially that um, 40 is the same as um, width divided by 10. So that's how we can represent it. 
So here we've got the same um, looking output here, but if we change the screen size, we've made it scalable, which is great. Maybe not the stroke weight, but that's fine. So that is how you do question four.